Hello, in this video we're going to estimate the residual variance in simple linear regression. And very simply, the residual variance is the, the fluctuation about the data points in the line. So the line doesn't fit the data exactly. And so that variance you know, of the data to the line is, is called the residual variance. And then we want to try to develop a point estimate to describe that variance about the line or the residual variance. So let's let x1 or y1 x1 through yn xn be a random sample. Remember we're in the simple linear regression setting so we're collecting tuples and we think these x's are going to help predict the y and there's a linear relationship. So let's assume the simple linear regression model with the standard assumptions now what are the standard assumptions? Uh, SA1 is that the average residual is zero. SA2, which means for standard assumptions two, is that the variance is constant. It, we call it sigma squared. And actually that's what we're trying to estimate. And the third assumption is that the uh, errors are uncorrelated or the covariance between any two errors is zero. So the residual is this, so it's this piece. So if we subtract that to the other side, we get this right here. And this is a number, that that's our data point, and this is the line, and there's some fluctuation, and that's the residual. Now, we don't know the beta zero and beta one. So let's use the sample least squares estimates for beta zero and beta one, you know, beta one hat and beta zero hat. And, and for the development of this, see a previous video in the playlist, General Linear Models 1. And this is the latest video in this playlist. And so what we do is then we call it epsilon hat and because we use the least squares estimates. So beta 0 hat, beta 1 hat. And this line is generically represented as y hat. So the, the residual is the data minus the regression line. Now, if I were to say, you know, uh, you know, forget this for a second, and I said we had some data x1 through xn, how would you calculate the sample variance? Well, you would go, it's, you know, it's the sum of xi minus the mean of x squared divided by m minus 1. That, that'd be it, right? So, and that's what we're going to try to do here. And so, this is our data point, uh, epsilon i. We're going to find the mean of epsilon, so epsilon bar. And that is, the, you know, it's the sum of the epsilons divided by n. But let's plug in what epsilon is, which is this piece here. Now, when we take the sum in, we have the sum of the yi divided by n, which is, which is uh, y bar here. And then we have n beta knots divided by n, it's just beta beta naught or beta zero. And here we have beta one, sum of the xi divided by n, well that's beta one hat xi or uh, x bar. And this is zero because the estimate for beta one hat or beta zero hat is y bar minus beta one hat x bar. And when you plug that in we get cancellation at zero. So this is zero. So now the estimate of the residual variance uh, we're going to estimate the residual variance with this, s squared. So it's xi minus the mean of our, or epsilon i minus the mean squared summed divided by n. Now don't, don't get upset about that dividing by n just yet. Okay. So here, well the epsilon bar we said was zero. So let's put zero there. And epsilon hat is yi minus yi hat, which is this. And so this is it. This is a point estimate for the residual variance. Now, and actually this is the general development for the sample variance too, but then we say, well, let's, on average, this is a, a little bit overestimate. And so we find its expectation and we figure out that if we divide it by n minus 1, then we develop what's called an unbiased estimate for our sample variance. And so 
maybe we can do the same thing here. So this, this well, it ends up being the maximum likelihood estimate for the residual variance, so it's a legit um, estimate. But let's see if we can develop an unbiased estimate. Do we divide by n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3? I mean, what do, what do we divide by? So let's find an unbiased estimator for sigma squared. And so this, yeah, this is the maximum likelihood estimate. So the answer is this. Now we're going to develop this in, in, in three or four stages. The uh, Step one, I, is these are quantities that we're going to use later. So the mean of, of yi is, you know, we plug in the our line plus air, and then we take the expectations in. This is the only random component. These are constants, so they come out. And the mean of epsilon is zero. That's standard assumption one, so it's the line. The variance of yi, plug in yi. These are constants, so they don't factor in the variance. So it's just the variance of epsilon, which we said was sigma squared. And that's what we're trying to come up with an unbiased estimate for. The expected value of y bar. Well, y bar, we can plug this in. Remember that, um, yeah, so if we look at, at beta 0 hat, that's equal to uh, y bar minus beta 1 hat x bar. So you can kind of back solve for y bar, and it's equal to this. So then we take the expectation in, and this x bar is a constant, so it's just this. And these are unbiased estimates, the least squares are, so this is it. So um, beta 0 plus beta 1 x bar. The variance of y bar, um, y bar is the sum of the yi divided by n, so the variance goes in, and so the constant, you know, divided by n comes out squared. And now, since the yi are uncorrelated, the covariance is zero between any two yi's, there's no covariance statement in this, just the sum of the variances. Well, this is uh, sigma squared. So there, and then you sum from one to n a sigma squared, so there's n sigma squares, one of them cancels, we get this. Now the variance of beta one hat is sigma squared over sx. And I'm gonna, uh, the previous video here, we de derived that. So now in the second section, we're gonna simplify this or reduce it to something that's much easier to take the expectation of. And this quantity here, remember, that is, uh, you know, it's a data minus the line, sum squared, and then previously divided it by n as a point estimate. So let's simplify this a little bit. So y hat, we, we put it in, and then beta zero hat is this, then we group the y's and we group these ones with beta ones and then we factor out a beta one and remember this is squared so now let's square it so it's this squared this times that that times that so there's two of them and then this squared comes down now we want to take this sum into all these and so this one just becomes the sum of this now here this quantity we multiply it to the y, and then we multiply it to the y bar. So to the y first is this one. Notice the minus. And this one is the, the y bar. So the minus and minus becomes a plus, and we get this. And then this is, you know, this is constant, so the sum goes into here. Now, this right here simplifies to this piece. So when you multiply that out, that's kind of a standard derivation, so I'll let you do that on your own. Here, um, um, this piece right here is what we were, the sum of the yi xi minus x bar is what we were calling sxy. So we have minus 2, 1 beta, SSXY, but now let's multiply it by 1, SXX divided by SXX. This sum is 0. These are all constants, so they're going to put in the sum. And this right here is SXX. Well, this piece right here 
um, okay so it comes down comes down this is beta 1 hat so we have beta 1 hat squared times SSX which then we have minus two of them and one of them so we get minus okay so that's we're finally this is in a in a much easier uh, thing to take the expected value of. so now let's take the expected value of, of this quantity which is you know this piece and now but but this inside is equal to this so we take the expected value of y squared and then it's the expected value of y bar squared minus x x x because the x's are constant and the expected value of beta 1 hat squared now the formula for the expected value of something squared is actually the variance plus the mean squared right that's the famous uh, identity normally it's you know the variance is equal to the expected value minus the mean squared so you can kind of back solve for this variant or the expected value of y squared and we do that for each of them so this is the variance plus the uh, the mean of y bar squared and here this is the variance of beta 1 hat plus beta 1 the mean of beta 1 hat squared so now we come down and then bullet number one we showed that that's the the sigma squared we show you know this the expected value is this and it's squared variance of the uh, y bar is sigma squared over n expected value of y bar was this squared this this now we expand it so we take this sum in and we get n of those and then when we when we uh, take this squared so we get beta 1 or beta 0 squared but we have the sum come in and so there's n of them and then we get this times that that times that so there's two of them and then when we bring the sum in it's the sum of the xi but you can divide by n and multiply by n and you get this and then you get this squared but then when you bring the sum in it's the sum of the xi squared so this one we get sigma squared this n we get you know when we multiply this out we get n beta zero squared you know this times that that times that and the minus n comes in then we get beta one x bar squared and the n comes in here we get canceled uh, minus sigma squared and then this so we get all kinds of cancelizations this cancels this cancels uh, we have the n come down we can combine the minus sigma squareds here the the beta 1 squareds um, and and here and here let's factor those out and then we're left with x i squared here we're left with minus n x bar squared and here we're just left with minus this but this quantity right here is SXX. That's what we're calling it. So we have SXX minus XXX. So that's zero. So we're left with this. And if we factor out a sigma squared, we get sigma squared times N minus 2. So what that tells us, so part 4, is this. So if we take the expected value of this quantity, which we just calculated, divided by N minus 2, so this expected value, the n minus 2 is a constant, so it can come out front. And then the expected value of this is n minus 2 sigma squared divided by n minus 2. So those cancel, and it's left with sigma squared. So therefore, s squared, oh, and somehow I probably should have used a different notation. This is not the same s squared as before because we divided by n. But if we take the residual and sum them, square them, and then divide by n minus 2, this is an unbiased estimator of sigma squared, the residual variance. Yep. Well, and the general rule for actually, you know, knowing what to div divide by is one is how many parameters are you estimating? So when we were calculating this to begin with, this was the residual right here, right? But we didn't know beta 0 and beta 1. So we had to use replacements, and there's one, two. So that's where the minus two comes in, the n minus two. And another uh, way to think about it is the number of restrictions on the residuals. 
And actually in the previous video here, we had two restrictions. And actually, let's see if I can pull it up very quickly. Um, yeah, so this was from the previous video. We showed this is zero and this is zero. So these are restrictions. And remember, this is the residual, yi minus yi hat. And, and again, the previous video. And these were restricted to zero. So there's one, two restrictions on the residuals. So that's where the minus two comes into play in, in our unbiased estimator. Well, anyway, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Um, in the next video, we're going to introduce what's called matrix notation for simple linear regression. So like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.